Bright or Harlot, containing the church in the Last Judgment and the Harlot in Revelation 17 through 19 by Benna Holveda, edited by Rulof A. Jansen, including his dedication to Mr. Donald J. Trump. A carbon copy of this book is also sent to Mrs. William J. Clinton. It is also read by Rulof A. Jansen. Dedicated by the editor and publisher to Mr. Donald J. Trump. Dear Mr. Trump, God, who inspired the Bible, the only infallible word of God, may well be calling you to one of the most important tasks in his world today. His son, Jesus the Christ, is ruling this world. He wants you to be a good soldier in his kingdom. Will you be a David or a Saul? That is, will you serve the God of David or practice the idolatry of Saul, who used the people of God for his own end? Will you be an Artaxerxes? There's a footnote here. Or Artaxasta, see the Dort Study Bible, Volume 5, page 159. I plan to send you two volumes of the Dort Study Bible and insert a pre-publication of the Epistle of the Apostle Jude from it in the back of this book. Will you be an Artaxerxes who as king allowed Nehemiah to rebuild the temple, the church, or an Ahab who had married a Tyrian princess, Jezebel, who was up to her neck in synthesis, in world trade, in world politics and in the ecumenical largest common denominator religion that messages of and to and for oneself. So Jezebel played the role of ecumenical figure in apostolic robes and cap upon which in the Esperanto of those days were embroidered the initials S-O-N, Shepherdess of Nations. There's a footnote here. This was a quote of Klaas Schilder, Your Ecumenical Task. Klaas Schilder, though unknown to many, was likely the most important spiritual leader of the Dutch resistance during World War II. You can download the complete audio version of his speech, the most important speech of the 20th century, on inhpubl.net forward slash ip forward slash ngj for no greater joy dash f a b free audiobook dot htm most of the contents of this book can also be downloaded in mp3 format from that page will you be a william of orange who as a faithful Protestant in the 16th century, resisted overzealous Protestants who, just as many Roman Catholics of those days wanted to do to the Protestant faith, wanted to outlaw the Roman Catholic religion. William, when he was a Roman Catholic himself, showed his greatness by faithfully declaring that a king may not rule the conscience of his subjects, since conscience is God's domain. I could send you many of our publications on both volumes, but will limit myself to the best two. I will maintain on volume 3 and volume of Orange, the silent prince for your son. There's a footnote here. I also plan to include Salt in His Blood for your son, a beautiful book about the successor of Martin Trump, Michael de Rutter, the greatest admiral in history. As my plan grew to send you I Will Maintain, which I have sent to many politicians in the past, I read one morning the book of Jude in English. Because of some questions that I had, I read it right away again in Dutch, as well as the annotations the Dutch translators had added to the text. I was struck by the relevance of that book for today. Since you attend a Reformed Church in America, a church that has its roots in the same synod that appointed the translators of that Bible and requested the Dutch government to publish it, I thought it fitting to finish the book of Jude for you at this time. 
I believe this Dutch Bible is still the best translation of the Bible in any Western language. As another footnote. It was published in Dutch in 1637 and soon also published in English in 1657. I believe this Dutch Bible is still the best translation of the Bible in any Western language. Very valuable because of its short annotations. We are republishing it today as the Dort Study Bible. This is a work in progress. Only five volumes have been done so far. That is from Genesis to the book of Job. As I already had been working on Ben Ahovada's speech, The Church in the Last Judgment, and its defense, The Harlot, in Revelation 17 through 19, in which he already in the late 40s discussed the United Nations and the new world order to come, I considered it very fitting to send that to you as well. Thus I began my work to finish it in the beginning of August 2016 and am finishing it the first week of September after watching and listening to your fall immigration speech in Phoenix, Arizona. Next to Schilders, your ecumenical task, I consider Holweda's speech, The Church in the Last Judgment, the most important speech of the 20th century. I began recording the audio version in 2015, shortly before I ran for political office in Canada for the Christian Heritage Party, and after I had helped a friend win his nomination in the Conservative Party, which caused the local CHP to decide not to run against him. I ran in the neighbor riding. In your speech, when you accepted the GOP nomination, you said, At this moment, I would like to thank the evangelical and religious community because I'll tell you what, the support that they've given me, and I'm not sure I totally deserve it, <laughs> has been so amazing and has had such a big reason for me being here tonight. True. So true. They have much to contribute to our politics, yet our laws prevent you from speaking your minds from your own pulpits. An amendment pushed by Lyndon Johnson many years ago threatens religious institutions with a loss of their tax-exempt status if they openly advocate their political views. Their voice has been taken away. I am going to work very hard to repeal that language and to protect free speech for all Americans. I thank you for those words. Yet even if Mrs. Clinton wins and makes us Christians a theater, as Hitler did to Hermannus Knoop and Cornelius Sitzma in Dachau, and there's a footnote here, I plan to send you also a theater in Dachau by Reverend Knoop in the self-justification of God in the life of Job by Dr. Sitzma, which I, as publisher, dedicated to the family members of those who died as a result of the terrorist attacks on New York, Washington, and Somerset, Pennsylvania on September 11, 2001. So as Hitler did to Hermannus Knoop and Cornelius Sitzma in Dachau, we will still confess that Christ is King today, also of the United States. And we will be more obedient to him, even when it will cost us our life and goods. We will do so as also the two witnesses of Revelation 11 did, or will do. Of these the translators of the Dutch Bible wrote, Some people are of the opinion that by these two witnesses are meant Enoch and Elijah, which for the time of 42 months, or of 1260 days, that is about three and a half years before the end of the world, should prophesy against the Antichrist, and after that be killed by him. And all that is here told in the text and in the following verses should literally happen to them. 
This opinion is advocated by some people today to conceal the exposure of the Antichrist and his kingdom, which now already for a long time has been known in the world. There's a footnote here. The 17th century translators are referring to the false church, especially to the Roman Catholic church. So it's now already for a long time has been known in the world. But besides it being absurd that the Holy Spirit in this revelation would ignore those things that consequently had to come to pass after this, in which the Church of Christ suffered so many changes and instantly would come to the four last years of the world, it is also impossible that the Kingdom of the Antichrist would be established within three and a half years and perform all the things that are foretold in the Word of God of Him and his kingdom throughout the whole world. It also is in conflict with the word of God, that the saints would descend from heaven with their heavenly bodies, to be killed here, or that they would come to preach again in this world, as Abraham testified in Luke 16 verse 29, or also that they would prophesy among all the nations for three and a half years, or that their bodies would be seen thus by the nations, generations and languages within the space of three and a half actual days, and that they who dwell upon the earth would rejoice at it and send presents to one another, as here is said in the text. That is why both the matter itself and the time of it must be understood here in a prophetical and figurative sense, namely of days which mean whole years, as in Ezekiel 4 verse 5 and Daniel 9 verse 24. Some people consider these years as having begun in the year 606, when the Bishop of Rome assumed the title of Bishop of the whole Christian Church, which title belongs only to Christ and when idolatry mostly began to break through among Christians. Others, however, consider these years to have begun somewhat earlier, namely from the destruction of the old Rome and of its dominion by the Goths, about the year 412. Yet, leaving this opinion entirely, the raising of these two witnesses, as was said in Revelation 11 verse 2, is fittingly understood of some eminent leaders whom God within that space of time caused to raise up in his church during the kingdom of the Antichrist, to reveal and oppose this dominion and idolatry. That is why they were said to be clothed with sackcloth because they opposed the pride and arrogance of the Antichrist's kingdom by wearing poor clothing and with a mournful face. And they are mentioned as two because there indeed would be but a few, yet enough to testify the truth to men, as all truth exists in two or three witnesses. See Deuteronomy 19 verse 15. And because God commonly used two of such excellent witnesses for the restoration of the decayed doctrine, as the here following words in Revelation 11 verse 4 first refer to Joshua and Zerubbabel, who established the worship of God after the Babylonian captivity, and to Moses and Aaron, which did the same in the wilderness. It can also be seen as referring to Elijah and Elisha, to which Revelation 11 verse 5 and 6 apply, who did the same under Ahab and other servants of Baal, which also can be called two, because they only used the doctrine of the Old and New Testament to refute the kingdom of the Antichrist as witnesses of this truth, and thereby powerfully convinced others. Such have also been Peter Waldo and Peter of Bruges in France, John Wycliffe and Pornius in England, John Huss and Jerome of Prague in Bohemia and Germany, who also were put to death for it in the Council of Constance, and with joy of all that company gathered out of several nations and languages, were burned, until it pleased God after that to raise up Luther and Melanchthon in Germany, Swingley and Uko Lampadius in Switzerland, Farrell and Calvin in France, with more others in their place, who with more power concluded their testimony and caused a great part of that great Babel to fall, of whose total ruin and destruction will be prophesied in the following verses. This is an annotation that will be in due time published in the last book of the Dort Study Bible, volume 14, 
on Revelation 11, verse 3. I am writing and quoting all this to you because you need to know what God wants you to do, just as everyone who is made in the image of God needs to know that. And many people should get to know you as well. Some people think they know you because they have seen or heard glimpses of you in the news. Many do not realize how biased that news is. Just watch the clip on abortion. If people do not listen to you all the way, but to the commentators and only to what they want people to see and hear of you, people get a very warped view. I am also sending you a copy of a complete reprint of a book that deals, among many other things, extensively with the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. It is 50 years in the Church of Rome and will also warn you about the Jesuits. I have listened to your speeches for many hours and appreciate most things you say. Certainly, I can understand one friend of mine who did not dare call you a Christian, but a friend of Christians. That same friend told me that he prayed God to change the heart of Hillary. Now I know that God is able to do that, but I believe it is far more likely that He will ordain you, like Queen Esther, as President of the USA. And He wants you to be faithful to Him. Only then will you be a blessing to the world of today. All the following articles will be of benefit to you. In your busy life you will find besides the Bible no better daily literature than the daily meditations of Klaas Schilder and Gold, Frankincense and Myrrh. May God bless you. For your wife I had hoped to include another beautiful book, They Looked for a City, by Lydia Buxbaasen, but it is not quite ready yet. For that reason I am enclosing Coronation of Glory by Deborah Meroff. Perhaps I can send the other book later even if it is after your election, the Lord willing. Nealandia, Alberta, Canada, Rulof A. Janssen. With kind regards from my wife, Teresa Janssen.